Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming out tonight. My name is Jamie Lewis. No, I am not related to this guy over here. But you notice that both of us use paper to work off of? I think it's an age thing. Uh, don't go there. Okay. Don't okay. Go there. You know, everybody else has phones and tablets. But it is my uh, great pleasure in presenting the first award in the memory of Lucy Rucius. It is properly named CCDC's Lucy Rucius Excellence in the Arts Award. This is a local excerpt from a writer. Make no mistake, mistake about it, Lucy Rucius hated Parkinson's disease, every damn thing about it. But despite living with the early onset of a cruel neurological disease, for more than 30 years, the singular Denver actor could find something funny in just about anything, maybe because of it. In fact, she developed an entire comedy routine on the pros and cons of Parkinson's that landed her a cameo in the 2010 Ed Zwick film, Love and Other Drugs, starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Anne Hathaway. One of her pros that Lucy would say, never being asked to babysit. <laughs> Con, being asked to hold a kid and he ends up in a tree. <laughs> that excerpt was from John Moore, a local writer. That was our Lucy in a nutshell, always looking for something funny or uplifting to make you feel better. I started working with Lucy in 2011. She was majestic, curious, and entertaining, but no, make, no mistake about it, her life was hard. I remember waiting to go on stage for a show and she was laying on the floor with severe tremors. Stage managers were massaging her legs to help her get ready for the show. Like a professional, she stood up, headed for the stage. Even though I had been disabled since 1961, I knew courage when I saw it. At the age of 25, Lucy contracted Parkinson's. She was working her way through Hollywood, and it was certain by her comedic timing and looks that she was going to have an impact on the industry. Her second break in the industry was discovering family, family theater company, Denver's own disability focused theater company. She excelled. She could either use her disability in the theme of the show or totally ignore it. Either way, she was the star of the show. Today we recognize the icon of Denver Theater to present the first CCDC Lucy Rusch's Excellence in the Arts Award, recognizing the work in the arts that have a positive impact on the disability community. I walked into this gallery in 2005. I was looking to recruit support for an annual, what was it, the ADA celebration? <laughs> yeah, it was for the Colorado Cross Disability Co Coalition. I left that day as a prospective board member for the gallery. <laughs> That's how convincing, convincing Chris and Damon are. I was glad to serve as their chair and board member for this gallery for three years. It was one of those places where you could see your efforts unfold in front of you. Come in here any time of the day and you see artists of all ages exploring and putting their imagination into their art. This process is repeated daily at their new working gallery at 10th and Navajo. On the first Friday of the month, hundreds of people will come through that door to be amazed at the, enter the en entertained by the quality of the expression that is produced here. Access Galleries not only provides opportunity for members to explore their talents, but to help market their wares and teach them how to develop their craft. One of the artists that stood out for me was Uzi. And if you look deep into the corner here, you'll actually see one of his works. He was an artist who happened to be deaf. He shared his story, he was from Israel, that as a child, he would spend hours and hours in his basement. He would paint, draw, and reflect on what it was like to be deaf. He started creating art that reflected a deaf person's life by drawing different shapes of the human hand. Working through an interpreter, I could hear the excitement and pride of having his work displayed at the Access Gallery. David, McLeese, and Christiani, and the rest of the staff have created this oasis for young and older adults to learn, explore, and to create. 
This is not an overnight success. They've been doing this for 25 years. It is my great honor to present the inaugural CCDC Lucy Ruscius Excellence in the Arts Award to Access Gallery. So, um, first of all, thank you for uh, presenting us an award that we actually created. <laughs> um, yeah, Jamie wasn't kidding when he said this was not an overnight success story. We actually started the gallery, not, not here, we started the gallery um, as an offshoot of a group that used to be called Very Special Arts Colorado. Um, I was actually hired in 1997, um, right after everyone in the entire world was freaking out about what the ADA meant. So the first couple of years that I worked here, um, I spent a lot of time doing site surveys, um, ADA compliance studies, all of this for our, all of the arts communities in Denver. Um, that soon morphed into we started meeting artists with disabilities. And I realized that most of the artists with disabilities that we were meeting had nowhere to show their art. So um, lo and behold, we decided to do something we had absolutely no business doing. We opened a gallery. And um, we kind of stumbled along for a few years. And then we moved over here in about 2002, 2000, yeah, right around 2002. And we're in the middle of the largest arts district in Colorado, one of the largest in the entire country. And on any given first Friday before the pandemic, and now over the last couple of months, on any first Friday, over a thousand people may walk through the door. And when you have that kind of captive audience, you kind of have an obligation to really put your best foot forward. And I, I really believe that we have built a community of artists that really feel like um, I, I feel like we're successful when somebody, one of our artists, starts referring to themselves as, I'm an artist here. Um, this community of artists, as soon as the pandemic hit, we were like, oh shit, what are we going to do with, you know, 28 kids, young people, young artists with disabilities that don't have internet, that don't have computers with cameras, and we figured it out in a real hurry, and what we really figured out very quickly as it wasn't a program, it was a community. The biggest thing that we were able to do is make sure that people could see each other, that they were checking in on each other, that we were still able to create hard work. Um, we ran as a more typical gallery for artists with disabilities, and then we ran our programs on the side. And about seven years ago, we were running our summer job program where we actually hired artists, kids, in high school, we actually hire them, pay them an hourly rate, uh, usually it's their first job, and we, we teach them job skills. And for years, we taught them job skills, and then we'd send them on their way, and we realized they weren't getting jobs. So on the one hand, we were very successful, we were helping artists gain skills, on the other hand, we were failing miserably because we are still looking at a 70% unemployment rate. So we changed the mission. The mission went from, you know, expanding access for artists with disabilities or educating, you know, we had some really sort of nice sugary mission statement, but we changed to say more about economic opportunity for artists with disabilities. And at that time, pretty much everything about the organization changed. We started looking at the artists that we were um, working with, not so much as participants, but really as community members. We were trying to figure out how we can take a young girl who only wants to paint dragons, literally paint dragons, help her figure out a way to make money by painting dragons. That is no easy task. <laughs> Until you start having her paint her dragons in front of Denver landlords. People really like to see dragons in front of the state capitol. <laughs> so we figured that out. So we work with a group of about 30 artists here. And we still represent artists like Uzi Bozgalo, who's actually um, the artist that, that Jamie referenced. This particular show is sort of an amalgamation. We have artists that we've worked with for well over 10, 15 years, and we have artists that we have in our current summer program. We have 11 um, high school students who are getting paid an hourly rate to produce art, to learn how to do, um, to, to um, further their artistic skills. We have everything from James Brown, smiling at you right there. James is very happy that you're here. I don't know if you knew that. Um, but along the way, when we changed our mission, we also changed our approach. 
instead of going to companies saying, please hire our artists, we said, please hire us, we'll make the artwork for your business, and we'll pay the artists. So we went from being someone who was trying to pre create um, employ or, or um, workers for other people and started working to become employers ourselves. So we're working very hard to figure out a way to just put all of our artists on payroll. Um, you know, yeah, um, Medicaid is not an easy group to work with. Um, the federal government is not an easy group to work with, but we're determined to do it. Um, I really loved what Julie shared at the beginning that it's all about co-leadership. We're starting to have some of our artists attend our board meetings. We have an artist council. We really are um, trying to walk the walk that we have. Um, and one other thing that happened during COVID is we remodeled this space. Um, I don't know if any of you came in before COVID, but this is much more open. It's much more professional. We actually um, were able to work with professional designers and architects to reimagine this space because we believe that the artwork deserves to be shown in the best possible light. So not only the lights here, but in the best way that we can. Um, some of our biggest clients now are our corporations. And we're still recovering from the pandemic, selling art to individuals, but our corporate client base just continues to grow. Um, we're working, we're growing. Um, like Jamie said, we used to create all the artwork here, and that's a little limiting, so we opened a studio about three blocks from here. Um, we're continue, continuing to figure out new ways that our artists can not only make their artwork, but make money from their artwork. I believe that art is not only transformative, I believe that it should be counted as a career. And I think that many, many people should be able to make their art, whether they can um, use a computer or not. So please take a look around. This is our portrait show. I think we have 60 different portraits up, everything from um, digital artwork to, um, I have to point out one of my favorite artists, Alonzo Clemens is a sculptor. And we selected his piece right over there. It's um, Black Elvis in Heaven with a Halo. And I just love that little piece. Um, I have, he usually doesn't paint people, but this particular one he did. So if you have any questions about the gallery, about who we are, what we do, and again, thank you so much. Um, I, I feel like I cheated a little bit because I got to select the image that we got, but uh, that's okay. So thank you all so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you for the amazing work. We always use Access Gallery's work when we give awards. So now um, we're going to premiere. One of the when when I get discouraged about the state of the world, which happens about every ten minutes sometimes. Um, one of the things that I do is I spend time with um, our amazing staff, um, and particularly. Our younger staff, you know, when people talk about, oh, well, the, the young people these days, well, they haven't met our young people, because our young people are amazing. Our whole staff is amazing, and our young people are amazing. And you're going to get to see a, a collage of our staff on this ADA video. It's something we started during COVID of making a short ADA video. We're going to play it right now, and then we will wrap up and have Hillary's birthday cake. <laughs>